Why shouldn't you increase your ability to make more money and get a better job in nursing? And especially if your current employer might pay for your schooling. At ORU, if you have an associate's degree in nursing, you can share a whole person experience with your patients by earning your accredited RN to BSN in as little as one year to 18 months. Did I mention it's online so you can do it on your schedule? Registration just opened. Learn more by calling 918-495-6363. Apply online at oru.edu slash online.
to win my war and you come back with the head of my enemy you come back and you call it my victory and all I did was praise oh that's all we do Lord and all I did was worship right here and all I did was bow down All I did was worship Oh, we sing hallelujah And hallelujah You have saved me So much better your way And hallelujah
is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. We sing again. Your goodness is running after, it's running. Zephaniah 317 it says the Lord your God is in your midst a mighty warrior who gives victory he will rejoice over you with gladness he will renew you in his love he will exalt over you with loud singing Jesus we thank you that you are with us you are in our midst this morning. I'm just struck that you don't leave us on our own. We don't have to struggle by ourselves. You're not a passive God who steps back. You step into our mess. You step into our life. You step into our heartache and you fight for us. You are the warrior who defends us time and time again. And Jesus, we say we love you. Father, we say come and fight for us. We welcome your presence in our lives, in this place, in this moment. For those of us who are struggling right now, Jesus, whether it's for finances, whether it's a relationship, whether it's something going on at home, just encourage you, invite the Lord into that. Say, Father, I surrender. I want you to fight for me. And he will, he will show up. He is faithful. His steadfast love endures forever. So Jesus, we love you. Thank you for being with us in this place today. You are so good. Your mercy endures for all generations. And that includes ours, that includes this moment, that includes this time. So God, we say we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm Cyrus Johnson. My major is in entrepreneurship and I'm from Columbia, Missouri. I was born with a learning disability called apraxia. 
and with apraxia that's that causes front or lobe damage to the brain and basically I just couldn't talk I couldn't speak I couldn't read to the age of probably about six or seven and I had 20 doctors tell me that I would never have the mindset over a six-month-year-old child. I would never make it through elementary school. I need to be put in a group home. My grandparents, you know, took care of me. They raised me up. I got placed in special need classes at Mizzou. And I would spend like eight hours a day just learning how to like just say syllables or say sounds like cha-cha-cha or s-s-s. And I learned how to talk by saying ch-urch, ch-urch, church. And finally, when I was about six or seven, a pastor from England flew all the way over on a Wednesday night. He felt like he was led from God to come speak to three people. And on that day, right after he prayed for me, I went up to the pulpit and started reading scriptures from the Bible in front of everyone. That was the first time I ever read in my whole life. So then after that, I started making a, like a full recovery. I started reading at a high school level. In elementary school, you know, I started proving all the doctors wrong. That said I would never make it, and now like, I just love where I'm at right now and I can't stop talking. I had a passion for entrepreneurship in high school. I actually won the entrepreneurship award. When I called ORU and I talked to them, I said, hey, I want to have an entrepreneurship degree, you know, I want to do things like that. They're like, well, we're actually considering getting one. So I was like, okay, I'll take my chance. So I showed up here and I started praying every single night for the entrepreneurship major to come. And I saw Jim Stovall come up on stage with a big check and saying that he's opening up the uh, entrepreneurship center and I just I just started like crying it's just been a huge blessing what Jim Stovall has done with the entrepreneurship program what other people like him have been doing it gives kids that had no opportunity an opportunity in life so I'm just so so blessed for the scholarships the entrepreneurship program and all the donations that have been coming in because it is really helping me We're very, uh, very delighted to have with us a special guest to speak to chapel uh, this morning. Tony Suarez is a sought-after speaker, author, and serves as the Chief Operating Officer of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. That's the country's largest Hispanic Christian organization, serving more than 40,000 congregations in the U.S., as well as thousands of churches abroad. Through his role as COO, Pastor Tony regularly meets with members of Congress, the White House, and speaks at events where the voice and participation of the Hispanic community in America has been requested. His greatest passion is preaching the gospel. His ministry is known for bringing hope and healing to countless people. He is a regular host on TBN, and his television program, Faith Alive, can be seen daily on Christian television across America and around the world. Suarez's recent book, The Triumphant Church, examines how from century through century, the Christian church has faced insurmountable obstacles, yet has continued to thrive. He's also the author of Use Me, Lord, published in 2012. Tony and his wife, Gina, who is accompanying him today. Welcome, Gina, to ORU, her first chapel, I think, here. Welcome her today. They have five children together, and they live in East Tennessee. ORU, let's give a warm welcome to Tony Suarez. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Would you clap your hands to the Lord today? Because I believe a spirit of revival is about to hit ORU in this chapel service. You brought a Pentecostal evangelist to chapel service, and we're going to have camp meeting. Amen. You can be seated. I'm so honored to be with you today. Thank you. So glad to have my wife with me. The last time I came to ORU, I had just gotten engaged like three days before I came to preach here. I wasn't spiritual. Like I didn't have the mind of Christ. I was just thinking about getting married. But now it's been like two years. So like now I'm spiritual again. No, I'm kidding. But I'm thankful. Uh, Gina and I, Gina was married to a wonderful man named Corey McCool. They pastored in Michigan, and 11 years ago, Corey passed away from colon cancer and left Gina a single mom of a five-year-old son and a one-year-old daughter. And four years ago, uh, I was married to a lady named Jessica, and she developed leukemia and passed away and left me a single dad of three kids. And I can't ever remember how old they were, so I won't even try to give the ages. And then about two years ago, Gina and I met you know, I'm, I'm Pentecostal. I was raised in church. I didn't know how to date. I don't have any game. I don't know who's supposed to be boo and who's supposed to be bae. 
I don't know what slided into the DMs. That sounded sinful. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I don't know what that is. So, but I had to slide into the DMs to meet Miss Gina. And we went on a date. I don't know how to date. She's like, do you want to pray for the meal? I'm like, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind every carb. That's in. I, like, I didn't know. She's like, hey. I'm like, well, praise the Lord. I didn't, you know, like going at her, preach her voice. And, but I won because I got married. And... Uh, <laughs> Amen. I told, her, I told her on the first date, I don't recommend you do this, but on the first date I said, I'm going to marry you. And she said, you don't know my middle name. I'm like, when does that ever come up? Like, when will I ever have to know your middle name? <laughs> but God blessed us and he took seven broken people, seven people that had lived through the valley of the shadow of death and he made us one whole, complete, healed family and we're so thankful. We're so thankful for the goodness of the Lord. I greet you on behalf of my apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher, financial guru. He says he's Batman and I'm Robin, but I will not wear tights. My pastor, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez, amen. He told me, you cannot come to ORU and not tell him that I said, hey. And so, hey, on behalf of Pastor Sam, and I give honor to Dr. Wilson and his wonderful wife and to the faculty of this wonderful historic school. We stand on holy ground, and I never take it lightly when I have the opportunity to come visit the wonderful, rich history and legacy of this school and even this auditorium, this wonderful, wonderful place. Amen. I want to go to the word of the Lord today from the book of Acts chapter 2 and verse 39. Amen. And there's some Pentecostals out there. I said, Acts, they're like, oh, glory. All right. <laughs> I'm the wrong person to bring to chapel if you brought a notebook today. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. The Bible says that I'm reading from the King James Version today. Not because that's what Jesus spoke. That's just the Bible I grabbed when I packed for this trip. <laughs> For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all those that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. I thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence. I ask that you would use me for your glory. I understand that without you, I'm absolutely nothing, but I ask that you would empower me one more time to speak your word, open our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our minds to discern. What thus saith the word of the Lord, and I ask that today you would confirm it with a mighty move of the Holy Ghost, that when we go back to our dorms, our classrooms, or our homes, we'll say, surely we have been in the presence of Almighty God. And I ask it in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and everybody said, amen. I want to quote for a moment a sermon that a mentor of mine named Morton Bustard preached uh, in 1999, just the first two minutes of that sermon, because I've never forgotten it, he opened a sermon that he preached called Earth Angels with the following. He said, in 1885, a city was so changed because, the, uh, because of a revival uh, that the police reported that there was nothing left for them to do because of a woman preacher named Mariah Woodworth Edder. Amy Simple McPherson drove her gospel car into Indianapolis while there was a band of influenza over the city. But the night that she drove her gospel car into Indianapolis, the influenza was lifted and healing came to the city. In 1915 to 1920, Spokane, Washington, according to government statistics, was deemed the healthiest city in the world, and the mayor held a public commemoration for a minister named John G. Lake to honor his efforts to bring healing and wholeness to that city. Evan Roberts in 1904 heard an evangelist by the name of Seth Joshua plead to God in prayer. Uh, uh, Seth Joshua prayed a prayer and said, bend us, bend us. And Evan Roberts heard that prayer and he left and he prayed and he said, God, bend me bend me. And that led him to preach a revival in Wales where over 100,000 people came to God. That revival was so great that not only were the men saved, but even the animals were touched 
I'll explain it in just a moment. The men of God were so touched by the power of God that they used to be profane men. They used to cuss all the time. But when they got saved, there was change in their life. You see, when God really changes you, when God saves you, it really will be, there really will be change. You really will talk different and you really will think different and the old man will pass away and behold, all things will become new. And that was true in Wales in such a way that when these profane men that worked in the mines went back to the mines, the donkeys didn't understand what they were saying because the mules only understood instruction when the men were cussing but they were so touched by the power of God that they no longer cussed so they had to retrain the mules so that the mules would understand the instructions without the cussing. That's how strong of a revival came to Wales. And then Morton Bustard said that Smith Wigglesworth, that great apostle of God, told Lester Summerall, I have seen God do great things, but I have not seen the end time. Great move of God that will touch this earth. But he said, Lester, you will see it. And before Lester Summerall passed away, he said, you've heard of Topeka and you've heard of Azusa. He said, they are our roots, but that wasn't it. You've heard of the voice of healing and you've heard of a great tent revival and the tent crusades of the 50s and 60s. He said but that wasn't it. He said I experienced the charismatic renewal and the Jesus movement but that isn't it. He said but before he died he said but I have been alive to see the beginning of the movement of the it. I have begun to see the it. The last day outpouring of the Holy Ghost that is taking place on the earth. If I had time, I would talk to you about Brownsville Revival and what God did in the 90s in Florida. The purpose of my walk down the memory lane of the Spirit-empowered church is not to simply reminisce about what God did, but to stir your spirit today that the God that moved in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and the 60s is moving in our midst right now now. And I've come as an evangelist. I've come in the office of an evangelist to stir your spirit today, to long for, to pray for, and to seek after what the Father is doing right now. I'm a nobody from eastern Tennessee, but in the last 11 months, including this time of of what some would call a pandemic, in the last 11 months in our ministry, Gene and I traveling around the United States and the world, we have seen over 6,000 people baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We've seen over 10,000 testify to miracles, signs, and wonders. That's not something that happened in the 50s. That's something that's happened in the last 11 months and I've come to ask the Father that the same anointing that he's placed on me come upon you so that wherever you go, you would see the power of God. Right before uh, uh, the the month of March, I was in a meeting in Los Angeles with different Pentecostal and charismatic leaders, and I met some people that are publishers for a Bible. They they call it the fire Bible. It's the fire Bible. It's it's a Bible that has a flame on it, and it's extremely popular in China. In China, they just say, you got the fire book. It's known by the flame. You know, Bibles are illegal, and so they just pass along the fire Bible, the fire book, and so they were giving me the testimonies of China. These These aren't my testimonies. These are their testimonies from the last year or two. They said that they have bought up time on radio stations and rather than rather than tell people they're reading the Bible, they just read the Bible as if it were poetry. And the Chinese people are so into the arts, they think they're just listening to poetry. And so they'll tune in and they'll listen to the scripture being read. And one day they said that on that radio station they were reading out of the book of James chapter 5 where it says, if there be any six amongst you, let them call for the elders and may they anoint anoint them with oil and pray the prayer of faith and healing will come. And a man called into the radio station and said, I was so inspired by the poem that you read yesterday about healing. What a wonderful poem. And he said, I got a water buffalo. 
I got a water buffalo that's been very sick, and I thought, I wonder if that poem really works. So I went out, and I found my water buffalo, and I was full of faith, and I anointed it with oil, and I'm just calling the radio to let you know my water buffalo is healed, and my water buffalo is whole. Now you can say that's crazy, but I say it's God giving a demonstration to a people so that they would know that Jesus Christ is still the way and that his word is still true. They bought up so much time on the radio stations in China that they just read the word, and then once, they did, once the government finds out that it's the Bible, they shut them down, and then they go on another radio station and on another radio station, and right before they get shut down, they finally say, what we've been reading to you aren't just poems. It's the word of God, and if you'll confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, if you'll repent of your sins, he'll save you, and he'll forgive you, and then they tell them, go find a pool of water. Go find an ocean. Go find a river. Go find a lake. Go find your bathtub and walk into the water and say, Jesus Christ is Lord, and just dunk yourself in the water. The last time I talked to those publishers, they said it's in the tens of thousands of people that have found a pool of water and have baptized. I come to give God praise today that a government can't shut down the church of the living God. Politics can't stop the church of the living God. And I prophesy to the church of the United States, there's no weapon been formed against us. There's no kind of political force against us. There's nothing that can stop this church. Give them praise in the house today. I I turned 40 in October. I'm a little bit of an old soul. I like old music. I like the old songs, namely because I know the words and I remember those songs. I'm a little bit of an old soul. And I asked God recently, I said, why didn't you let me be alive for the voice of healing? I would have loved to be in those tent revivals and to be there with the ABCs and with the Oral Roberts and be under the tent and see the great miracles of God. I said, why didn't you let me be born then? He said, because if you'd have been born then, you'd be dead now. I'm like, do you want to say that to me in Spanish? Because like, I don't, no comprende right now. I don't get it. He said, I needed a remnant that would carry the fire in this generation. I needed a remnant that would operate in the same demonstration and in the same power. That's not just about me, ladies and gentlemen of ORU. That's talking about you. You're not an accident. You're not a surprise. I don't care if you ever got into a heated argument with one of your parents and they said, and you were a surprise. You weren't a surprise. You're the perfect will of God for this generation and he made sure you were born right now. He knew the problems we were going to have. He knew the political strife we were going to have. He said, I'm going to raise up a generation at ORU that's going to carry the fire of old and the former and the latter reign together shall be greater than anything we have ever seen. I want to be like that old-fashioned church in a modern-day context. But to be that church, I have to be full and stay full. I need to be filled and I need to stay full of the power of the Holy Ghost. I want to be like that church of the 20th century, like that church of the first century. There wasn't any kind of racial injustice. There wasn't, there wasn't any kind of sickness. There wasn't any kind of politics that the church wasn't convinced that revival couldn't fix. The church was sure that when war would rise, when pandemics would come, the church would go to prayer. The church would go to revival. The church would go to seeking after God. They would be falsely accused. They would be tortured at times, yet they would see great moves of God. And that kind of movement, that kind of revival cannot happen if we don't keep preaching the message of the Holy Spirit. This isn't optional. It's not denominational. It's not for the ones that prefer it and the ones that don't prefer it can believe something else. This is unto you and unto your children's children and your children's children's children and yea, even those that are far off and the Spirit and empowered, spirit-filled Pentecostal church needs to go back to our roots. We need more prayer and less politics. We need more revival and less radicalism. We need more of the lion and less of the elephant. More of the lamb and less of the donkey. More of the dove and less of the serpent. We need a Holy Ghost revival. (laughs) 
I'm almost done, partially because I can't breathe. (laughs) Acts 1 and 8 says, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The Amplified Version says you shall become capable, efficient, and mighty. I like how that Amplified Version reads. It helps me with my insecurity. It helps me when I don't feel like I can make it or like I'm, it helps me when I don't feel like I'm qualified, when I don't feel like I'm good enough to be used of God. This tears down every stronghold of condemnation and insecurity because you're right, I'm right. We weren't good enough. We weren't qualified, but the Holy Ghost qualified us. The Holy Ghost has made us capable. The Holy Ghost has made us efficient. And through the power of the Holy Ghost, we're now joint heirs with Christ to the promises of God the Father. We have access to the throne room, the cattle on a thousand hills, all the gold, all the silver, all the power, all the might, because he filled us with the Holy Spirit to operate and to walk in demonstration, power, and victory through the power of the Holy Holy Ghost. I, 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 I got three. I, well, I used to have three. Now I got five kids at home. My greatest fear, my greatest fear is that I somehow don't pass down this message of the Holy Ghost to my children. My grandmother passed away. She was 93 years old. My grandmother passed away last week in Columbia. She was a mighty woman of God, 93 years old. She was preaching to the doctors. Uh, and, and she, we thought, we thought she had dementia the last two years. But when the doctors would come in, if something was off, she'd like go into the Holy Ghost. She'd be like, mm, "Hold up, before you touch me, I bind every spirit on on the inside of you. I rebuke it." Cat. Okay, now you can take care of me. Or like grandma, like I wouldn't go around her without like praying a sinner's prayer first. <laughs> But my, my, my grandmother's legacy in Colombia is that she used to wobble onto buses. When she was 40, she'd walk like she was 90. She'd wobble onto the buses. And she'd get onto the bus and she'd put her little token in the, in the box. And then as soon as she'd get on the bus and they close the door, she'd wait for them to close the door. After they close the door, she'd turn around. Repent, ye generation of vipers. She'd start preaching and they'd say, you gotta sit down. She'd say, I'll sit down when I finish preaching. So let me finish. And she'd walk up and down the bus. You need to get that cigarette out of your mouth. You need to, get, you need to throw that bottle out. You need, and she just, I mean, it's old fashioned. I'm not saying we do that anymore. You get sued nowadays. But she'd just go up and down the bus preaching, laying hands, prophesying, rebuking devils. That's, that's my heritage. I don't, when I would go to Columbia as a, as a kid, as, as a teenager to go visit my grandparents, my grandfather passed away 21 years ago. I'd go visit my grandfather when I'd get to, when I'd get to Bogota, he'd sit me down and he'd say, Tony, let me see your knees. And I have to roll up my pant leg and he'd touch my knee and he'd say, you don't pray enough. Now I know that sounds legalistic, I know, but I love, you know, we're Colombian, it's okay, we extra. He'd say, you're not praying enough. And then he'd pull up his pant leg and he'd have these big fat callus on his knees. He said, you know what that's from? He said, because I pray for you every morning. Every morning I'm on my knees. Now granted, there's no carpeting and all of that in Columbia, especially back in those days. So he had an excuse. My favorite thing is, see, my dad was as zealous as my grandfather. And my dad was a prayer warrior. And you know, as teenagers, you know, you remember when you used to argue with your parents? My favorite thing in Colombia was when my grandfather would come to my dad and say, Rito, pull up your pant leg. I'm like, yeah, buddy. And he'd say, you're not praying enough either. That's my my legacy. I want my kids to know that this message of the Holy Spirit is the only answer to the problems our world is facing right now. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead now dwells on the inside of you. Do you ever think to stop, just like stop and think, what does that mean? That while the Son of God laid in a tomb, the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, passed by Roman soldiers, crept through those rocks and raised the Son of God from the dead. If the Holy Ghost can raise the Son of God from the dead, 
Imagine what the Holy Ghost can do in your life. I prophesy you're coming out of poverty. You're coming out of insecurity. You're coming out of suicidal thoughts. You're coming out of every tormenting thing that the enemy has brought against you. You're coming out with resurrection power because of the Holy Ghost. Because of the Holy Ghost. You, you and I are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. An old friend a wonderful woman that had a huge impact in my life. She still travels the world. She's 87 years old and strong, 87 years young and strong. She's preached chapel for you before, Bishop Ann Jimenez. Bishop Ann and I were talking about the church and we were talking about the Holy Ghost. And she said, Tony, have you ever, have you ever considered that when Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church? Have you ever considered what he was talking about? I said, what do you mean, Bishop? She said, Tony, He was talking about you. She said, because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This wasn't about a denomination, a corporation, or an organization. This was about you and I, the temple of the Holy Ghost. So when Jesus said that, he was talking about you. He's talking about your future marriage or your current marriage. He's talking about your family. There's no devil in hell that can withstand the power of God that's on the inside of us. Would you stand with me in this room? That little walk down memory lane. And what I'm trying to convey to you today is for this reason. Our world needs revival. Our country needs revival. The enemy's only weapon, he really only has one, is deceit. He is the father of all lies. And the enemy lies to us and says, we've never been down this road before. That's a lie from the pit of hell. We've been down this road many times. Many times. And the church is what always brought us out of it. With revival. With prayer. With consecration. Consider the subject of racial injustice for a moment. A move of the Holy Ghost is the only thing that has ever united humanity. The book of Acts chapter two in an upper room. What brought them in one accord was the promise of the Father. And then it spilled into the streets, everyone hearing their own language, everyone gathered in the same city. Holy Ghost united them. 1901, the Holy Ghost falls in Topeka in Charles Parham's Bible College and it falls on a young lady. But there's a black blind preacher who they won't let in the door. So he's sitting outside the window listening because he's, he is determined. I care more about the promise of the Father than the ignorance that might be in that room to not let me in. He doesn't allow ignorance to cause him to walk away from something that God's about to do. So he stays close and he hears about the promise of the Father. And God sends him to Azusa. The greatest modern outpouring of the Holy Ghost since the days of the book of Acts. And it was a blind black preacher that was at the podium. And under the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, nobody cared what color the preacher was. In Azusa, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, they all sat in the same house. Read the old articles. That's what got them. That's what the media was astounded. And nobody cared where anybody sat. Nobody cared what the color of the preacher was. Nobody cared what the style of the music was. They were in awe that something would call the world together. Well, it's that same unifying spirit that moved in the book of Acts. Our historians would remind us, yes, Brother Tony, but they divided over race in Azusa. Oh, yes. Once they let politics in, once they let titles in, and everybody got upset about who's this title and what group are you from? So we had 300 denominations get born out of one move of God because we got consumed with us rather than him. Tabasha. But every time the people of God would come together again, seeking a move of the Holy Spirit, God would bring us back together. 
When the Voice of Healing movement began, there was a rope that would separate where Caucasians sat and African Americans sat. But then the Holy Ghost inv invaded those tents. It, it invaded those tents. And at some point, the Oral Roberts and the A.A. Allens and the other Voice of Healing heroes said, get those ropes out of our tent. Get those ropes. We don't care where anybody sits as long as we sit under the fount of God. As long as we sit under an open heaven. I don't care where you sit. We just want to sit under the glory. I urge you by the mercies of God, we don't need to have, I, 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 well, I, I want to say it correctly. We need to have conversations, but we need to have a prayer meeting more than we need to have a conversation. We need to pray, God, send a fire, send the Holy Ghost, send, because here's what's happened. When the Holy Ghost falls, it's not going to just change the person you don't disagree with. When the Holy Ghost falls, it'll change you. It'll get on the end. I, I'm not asking for the Holy Ghost to change you. I'm saying, Spirit of the living God, change me, cleanse me, mold me until I am the person you want me to be. I need a Holy Ghost revival in my life. I want to pray over you before I give it to Dr. Wilson today. I want to pray and ask you to join me in prayer for a Holy Ghost outpouring revival across the land. I bring glad tidings to you. Good news, it's happening everywhere. People are being filled with this spirit. People are giving their lives to the Lord all over this nation. 70% of churches have reopened in America. You know what most pastors are telling me? It's a different crowd at our church. It's a different crowd because it's new people that are coming and they're giving their lives to the Lord. They're being water baptized. Gene and I are in the middle of a five week extended revival right now in Houston. That sounds like, I feel like I'm in 1942 saying that out loud. We we're supposed to go for one service. It's turned into five weeks. We're going, more, we're going another four weeks. They're practicing social distancing. They're wearing masks. There's no laying on the hands, but you don't have to lay your hand because the father's laying his hands. I was, pre <laughs> I was preaching two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I was preaching in the service and some lady took off running the aisle screaming. I'm like, okay, well, all right. Kind of threw me off my groove till I found out why she was running. She testified and she said, the Lord told me to run. She said, I'm blind in one eye. But the Lord said, if you'll run the aisles right now, I'll open your eye. While she was running, she started screaming because instantly the, old, the Lord opened her eye. Just like that. That's the kind of revival we're under right now. That's the kind of move of God we're under right now. And I pray that that same Holy Ghost fire would consume ORU. Come upon every student. Come upon every faculty member. Come upon every preacher that's in this room. Hallelujah. Upon the, would you raise your hands in the presence of God? Upon the authority of the Word of God and the power that's in the name of Jesus with all authority that God has given to me. I say heavens open up and rain down Holy Ghost rain over every student, over every person watching. Let Holy Ghost revival hit this nation. Holy Ghost revival hit our world. Holy Ghost revival hit our government. Let them come to the feet of Jesus by the tens of thousands. Let them be slain in the spirit. Let them be water baptized. Let them speak in other tongues. Let them be full of the joy of the Lord. And if there be any sick amongst us today, in the mighty name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, be restored. Now in Jesus' name, give God a shout of praise in this house. Give God a shout of praise in this house for what he's doing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. God keep you. And may you have the greatest revival. Job chapter 5 verse 22. We laugh in the face of destruction. We laugh in the face of famine. We laugh in the face of COVID. We make a mockery of the attack of hell because we're living our greatest days right now. Give God praise one more time. Praise the Lord.
Just hold your hands out like this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I rarely do this from the pulpit, but all over this room, would you just allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you for just a moment right now? Just, just pray in the Spirit. Go ahead. Mask and all, just allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you. If you've never experienced this prayer language, the gift of God, now would be a wonderful time. Just release your faith. Release what's working on the inside of you. The anointing that you feel, the presence that you feel wants to fill you up and flow out of you today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Go ahead, turn the Holy Spirit loose on the enemy for a moment. Release, release the Holy Spirit from you against hell, against darkness, against fear, against everything that he's brought against you. Just release, release your faith and release the power of God out of you today. You're filled with the dynamic of God, the dynamite of heaven. And no weapon, no weapon will, will be able to prosper and the gates of hell cannot stop you if you're full of him. Greater is he that is in you right now, in this moment, than he that's in the world. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I bless you today, all over this place, from the very top seats, Lord, to the front row of the Maybe Center. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, at ORU. This university is built on you, Holy Spirit. And so we welcome you. It's, it's 2020, and here we are. And we're crying out that we welcome you in our day, in our generation, to do your work, to do what you've always done, bring life where there's death and healing where there's sickness and favor where there's disfavor and victory what looks like defeat. Bring, bring what you've always brought. Do it among us in our generation. In Jesus' name. And everybody shout it. Come on, and everybody shout it. Amen. Let's give God thanks for the ministry of Tony Suarez again. Thank you, Tony. Go change the world. Amen. This has been a presentation of Oral Roberts University, a world-renowned and fully accredited Christian university with more than 100 undergraduate majors and minors, as well as graduate degrees in business, education, and theology. Want to advance your career or can't move to Tulsa? Then ORU has what you need with convenient online undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Don't wait! You can experience ORU's unique whole person approach to learning and graduate empowered to succeed. Visit us today at ORU.edu. Make no little plans here. Is your destiny worth it? That's really the question you're asking yourself. But the bottom line is, what are you willing to do to make your dream happen? You may not even have a dream yet, but the truth is you have a destiny and it's your job to achieve it. And that's where we come in. Forbes calls Oral Roberts University one of America's top colleges. U.S. News and World Report considers us one of the best value universities. The Travel Channel calls us stunning. Princeton Review says we're a best in the West. And the Huffington Post says, ORU is one of the friendliest universities in the country. We're building spirit-empowered whole leaders for the whole world. The kind of leaders who are just as comfortable in Shanghai, London, or in small town America. That's why 99% of our grads are employed or in graduate school within six months. It's also why students from more than 100 nations call ORU home. So back to the original question, is your destiny worth it? The choice you make about college will echo for the rest of your life. It's the place so many people feel they grew the most, started lifelong relationships, found their purpose, and discovered who God called them to be. Your future should begin at Oral Roberts University, because you don't take chances with your destiny.